الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبی و سلم ام بیر حب طف اللہ کنٹینیو آن ان آر اسٹڈی آف دا فک آف پیوریفیکیشن اینڈ پریئر وی ریچ ور امیم بن فوزین حف اللہ تعالی مینشن اباؤٹ وائپنگ اوور دا خوفس وائپنگ اوور دا ساکس اف یو ول اینڈ دس شوز دا ایز ان اسلام دیٹ اسلام has uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated that many acts of ibadah that there are ways to perform them with great ease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated that there is ease with our ibadah. And that is in order to encourage us to uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make it not difficult because if it was difficult then very few people would be able to perform their ibadah to Allah izo wa jawa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for us. So this applies to the rulings on ablution, ablution decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To illustrate, sometimes there is something covering the organs washed during ablution, which is hard to remove and may be needed as a means of protection, like for the feet, which meaning the khufs or socks or something. So meaning you, you might need it to keep you warm, of course, to protect you from the weather, uh protect you you know we wear socks for various reasons and the hoofs and so uh or another scenario is protecting our heads for example wearing the turbans and the like we're wearing the turbans uh, of course in the lands where there were turbans and here in saudi arabia where there were the shamah and things like this they use it to protect their heads from the sun You know, it has a very practical application. It's not just, just uh, you know, for decoration or ornament or what or beautification, but it is also used uh, in order to protect you from the conditions, from the weather conditions. And another way in which clothing or things protect you is, for example, in bandages and splints and so forth, if you break a limb or... Uh, you know, you are injured or something. So it may be deemed necessary and it is permissible for one uh, performing ablution to just wipe over such coverings instead of removing them and washing what is underneath. So for example, someone who has a broken arm, okay, and their arm is in a cast. Well, they can't readily take the cast. They need the cast for a medical reason uh, in order to mend their limb, to mend their hand or their arm or whatever is injured. And so with that being the case, then they need, uh, then it's legislated for them to wipe over that instead of uh, obviously just taking off their cast. That's not practical. So this is how the ease of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for his servants to worship him and him alone. As for the permissibility of wiping over the khufs and socks, for example, during evolution, instead of removing them and washing underneath, Uh, it is stated in many a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in sound authentic hadith uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wipe over them whether at home or on a journey. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam enjoined doing the same. So meaning it's permissible as a traveler or as uh, uh, someone who is a muqim uh, who who lives in a, is a resident of a place to wipe over the khufs. You don't have to be a traveler. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned uh, in an authentic hadith that uh, the mas ala khufain, that the wiping of the khufain for the muqim is al yom wa layl, a yom wa layla, you know, a day and a night. And lil musafir, for the traveler, it is thalatha ayam wa layalahinna. It is three days and three nights. Okay, that the person could wear their socks because when you're traveling in, uh, you know, in a lot of a lot of situations and especially in the in uh, prior history that uh, traveling was very difficult. It has become very easy for us now, but still there's difficulty. So you may be wearing the same socks. You know, you may be uh, in a situation, you may be wearing your socks more than 24 hours, maybe more than two days, you know, but generally We're not accustomed to that, but it is permissible for three days and three nights. And then you need to make wudu. 
As regards the legal proofs of the permissibility of wiping over the chufs, Al-Hassan said, I was told by 70 of the companions of Allah's Messenger وسلم, that he used to wipe over his chufs with his wet hands during ablution. Moreover, Imam An-Nawawi said, the permissibility of wiping over the chufs was reported by un innumerable companions, meaning many companions. Imam Ahmed also said, there is not a shadow of doubt in my mind concerning the legality of wiping over the chufs as there are 40 hadiths of the Prophet وسلم, indicating its permissibility. In addition, Ibn Mubarak Ta'ala and others stated that there was no disagreement among the companions concerning the permissibility of wiping over the chufs during ablution. Likewise, Ibn al-Mundr and others reported the scholars' consensus, ijma, a consensus of the scholars, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, uh, on the permissibility of such an act during ablution. In addition, the adherents of the Sunnah and Muslim community unanimously agree on its permissibility, unlike those innovators in religion who do not deem it permissible. So there are whole sects that think it's not permissible. They do not wipe over their their socks. They will take their socks off for every wudu. Okay, because they don't think it's imperm it's permissible at all. But we know because Ahlul Sunnah will jama'a is following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They follow the Book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And as was mentioned, 40 ahadith. And Imam and Al-Hasan Al said, I was told by 70 of the companions of Allah's Messenger ﷺ that he used to wipe over his khufs with wet hands during ablution. So that is sufficient for Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Wa ghayrihim. We don't even pay attention to their differences. These aren't different. These aren't. These are differences in religion. These are differences. This is the difference between Sunnah wa bid'a. The difference between Sunnah wa bid'a, meaning it's the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to wipe over your hoofs. Okay, it's completely permissible. Have no doubt about that. And if you hear otherwise from someone else, then you don't don't even listen to that person about anything in in religion, because they are on something. Totally different than the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. And and I, a last point I want to mention is you'll find in many of the Aqidah books that the Imams of the Sunnah, like if I open up some classic books, like there's a great Imam named Imam Babahari. Uh, he was a Hanbali scholar from like the third century. Um, you know, many of the classic texts they talk about wiping the chufs. Why? Why would they put that in an Aqidah book? Because it became a sign of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah to wipe over the Khufs. And only Ahl Bida declared that it was impermissible. So Ahl Sunnah, even so much so that they wrote about it in the books of Aqidah, because it became a thing of, uh, of Ittaqad or Aqidah and Creed that, hey, the people who don't wipe over the Khufs believe other than the Creed of Ahl Sunnah about the permissibility. They believe other than that. But Ahl Sunnah believes this. It's affirmed through the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So it's not just the thing of fiqh, but it's also a mas'ala that has a has an aqidah component to it. Okay, because it has to do with belief in that respect. Uh, wiping over the khufs during ablution. This act is permissible and observing it is better than taking off the khufs and washing the feet. So it's better to wipe over your chufs. As the former is a sign of making use of the legal permission, permission by Allah. It's called a rukhsa in Arabic. That those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible, taking advantage of those rukhas that as the, the, um, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentioned. Uh, Allah, the Almighty and ever majestic be He, uh, this is uh, following His permission, following the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and contradicting the religious innovators. So by doing it, you are contradicting, you're going against the people of Bid'ah, the people who have innovated in the religion of, uh, of Islam and who think otherwise. Wiping of the Khufs is a spiritual removal of the impurities underneath. So it's a spiritual act because your feet are in the same status, but it's spiritual. So it, it, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, it's a spiritual purification. Okay, by following this ritual of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, the Prophet never changed the condition 
of his feet to perform ablution. If he وسلم, was wearing two hoofs, he used to wipe over them. And if not, he used to wash his feet. Therefore, it is impermissible to put on hoofs just before ablution in order to wipe over them while performing wudu. Okay, so we'll talk about the some of the conditions. The duration of the validity of wiping over the hoofs. So how long can you wipe over your hoofs, basically? This mesala we just talked about a little bit. We mentioned the hadith. It is permissible for a resident, someone who's not a traveler, to keep wearing hoofs and wipe over them during evolution for a period of one day and one night, as we said. Al-yom wa layalaha. A day and a night. As for the traveler whose journey, journey legally allows shortening prayer, so a traveler, that he's a real traveler, where he can shorten his prayer. Uh, the period of permissibility is three days and three nights, as we mentioned. And the Prophet Sallallahu specified that uh, in, in a hadith that we, we just mentioned. For both the resident and the traveler, the period of permissibility of wiping over the hoofs, when does it start? So this is another mas'ala, this is another issue. When is it okay to wipe over your hoofs, over your socks? The time starts from the time of being in a state of ritual impurity caused by passing your, you know, urine, stool, or wind, a chromochrome law, after wearing the hoofs. As ritual impurity necessitates ablution for prayer. Still, some scholars view that the duration begins from the first ablution after being in a state of ritual impurity. Basically, it means this, that to know and understand the time of wiping your hoofs is uh, that, for example, for a, a condition of wiping over your socks and your, your um, hoofs is that you enter them in a state of purification. So you can't have, you know, go to the bathroom at Karma Allah, you come out of the bathroom and you put your socks on. Can you then wipe over your hoofs when you need to make wudu? No, because you have to enter them, you have to put on your socks or your hoofs in a state of wudu. So that means you've made wudu and then you wear socks. Then that means when you break your wudu, you, uh, when you break your wudu, then you can wipe over your socks. And the time that is considered a day and a night begins from the, as some of the scholars say, from the first time that you wipe. So you, so then, for example, you you cleaned your feet and you put your socks on, okay? Then you break your wudu later, okay? The first time you begin to wipe your, when you go to make wudu and you wipe over your socks, that's the beginning of the day and a night. So maybe some scholar even say twenty four hours, okay? Using that as a day and a night, and Allah knows best. So that is the awla mess. So they say from awla mess, that from the beginning of the wiping, okay, is when you count that. And that's when you would count your three days if you're a traveler. Three days and how many nights? Three nights. Good. Three days and three nights for the traveler. Good. The conditions. This is very important. So these are the conditions for wiping over the hoofs and the socks. First, you have to be in a state of ritual impurity. Uh, sorry. Ritual purity. Okay. That means you have to make wudu. You have to have a state of wudu. You can't be in Janaba. You can't be, uh, you know, you have to be in a state of purity. And this is in accordance with uh, a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. For example, that was reported in Bukhari and Muslim, said to the one who wanted to help him, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to one of the companions who wanted to help him, putting on his hoofs, he said, in taking his hoofs off to, uh, in taking off his hoofs to perform wudu. And we'll, we'll study that hadith very Shortly, or at least in the next sitting, maybe. Leave them as I had put them on after performing ablution. Meaning, don't take off my socks, don't take off my hoofs, because, inni dakhultuhuma tahiratain. Verily, I entered them, I, I put the, the socks on when I was in a state of purity. So then, that's how we know uh, that condition. It was also narrated that Safwan ibn uh, Asal said, we are commanded by the Prophet Sallallahu to wipe over the hoofs if we put them on while being in a state of ritual purity. 
Thus, it is quite obvious that the ruling is dependent on being in a state of ritual purity. So we talked about that. The second condition, the chufs must be lawfully acquired uh, or gotten or made, meaning you can't steal chufs. If you stole someone's socks, you stole some nice chufs, uh, then this is uh, considered impermissible impermissible to wipe over them during ablution. In a word, illegal permission is not applied to what is already illegal. Okay, so it means you have to have legal, le legally have acquired them. Okay, this is another condition, and especially according to the Henbali Medheb. Okay, uh, the third condition the chufs and their likes must completely cover the feet up to the ankles, like these little socks, these ankle socks. They need to be covering to the ankles, so they must be able to cover the fard of the wudu. If they were just like these little socks where your ankles are showing, then those are not permissible to wipe because they're not really chufs. They don't really cover, they don't cover the, uh, the, yeah, the ankle, the, the body parts that need to be washed. Likewise with this, they also, uh, and they should be thick enough to conceal what is underneath, meaning there shouldn't be big holes in them. And there's also some ikhtilaf in this because some of the scholars, they say that, and I'm of this view, that if there's holes in the socks and stuff, you know, and it, it's, so it's not necessarily covering all those things perfectly, that it's permissible to use. And they use as evidence because some of the Sahaba were very poor and they didn't have full, you know, they had holes in their, their garments and they wiped. Okay. And we don't have any evidence to show that they, that it was impermissible. So, uh, this just shows another difference of opinion. My opinion, as I said, this is what I hold in this. If I have a hole in my sock, I'm still going to wipe over it. Okay. Uh, but according to some. The ulama, and I believe Imam Fozan holds this view that it's not permissible. Since it is permissible to wipe over the chufs, it is permissible to wipe over any foot coverings, such as socks made of wool or such like material, which are thick enough to cover underneath. That is due to the fact that the Prophet ﷺ wiped over socks and shoes while performing ablution. That's another thing. You can wipe over your shoes. When I'm in hiking, when I go hiking and I'm in cold weather, and I know that I, you know, and I probably started out my journey with wudu, with my socks and my shoes. Then I wipe over my shoes. I don't always take my socks, especially when it's cold. If I'm hiking in the winter and it's in the snow, I just wipe over my boots. And I pray in my boots, which is also the sunnah of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can pray in your sandals, you can pray in your shoes, okay? But of course, we wouldn't do that in the masajid. Um... Many compilers of hadith, like Imam Ahmed and others, uh, Deem Sahih and Imam Tirmidhi, wiping over such things during ablution is valid until the legal period of permission ends regardless of the frequency of taking them off and putting them on. So, this is another mas'ala with regards to the khufs, okay? That uh, many ulama, they hold that if you, like we said, for the one who is not a traveler, a resident, that if they wipe over their chufs, and now it's more than 24 hours, or now it's more than a day and a night, okay? Now it's a day and a night, and it's going to the next morning, for example, okay? It's fajr of the next day. They've already been wiping for 24 hours or whatever, okay? Or beyond that, maybe it's dhuhr, and they still have their socks on. Uh, so the scholars say because of, because the Prophet ﷺ said, that it's a day and a night, then they say that your wudu is, uh, that you cannot wipe over them any longer. Okay, so that, that shows the tahdid, the time limit for that. Uh, scholars also dif differ about taking off the socks and, and so forth. Uh, and that's why it's better, you know, to, you know, but if, but taking off your socks, the, the sahih with regards to that, taking off your socks does not invalidate your wudu. Okay, it's not an invalidator of your wudu. So meaning if someone is wiping over their socks and they take their socks off, their socks got dirty. Okay, but they still have tahara. They had wiped over their socks and now they've taken off their socks and they put new socks on. Some scholars say that's not permissible. They cannot wipe over their socks. They have to make wudu. I mean, they have to, you know, wash their feet with their wudu. 
their next will do. Other scholars say no, and I'm of this view that, you know, you can put clean socks on as long as you're on tahara. Why? Because you're in a state of purity. You know, you have the ablution and that uh, taking off your socks does not invalidate your wudu. When you take off socks, that doesn't break your tahara. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. As regards to the turban, it's permissible to wipe over it under two conditions. The first is that the turban must be covering the areas of the head, which is traditionally covered. The second condition is the turban must be wrapped around the lower jaw up to the head. One or more than one turn. So at least one turn or more. Or to be... Uh, or to be with a back tail, that it has a tail. It is stated in many hadiths related by more than one of the imams that the Prophet ﷺ wiped over his turban during ablution to illustrate Umar ibn al-Khattab said, he who is not purified by wiping over the turban, meaning he doesn't think it's uh, sufficient, then may Allah not purify him. So the, this is because the Sahaba مجمعين, were vigilant in practicing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They loved the Prophet ﷺ and they wanted to practice his sunnah in totality and completely. It's worth mentioning it's permissible to wipe over the khufs and turbans only in a case of purification, okay? From the state of minor ritual impurity, but not major. So meaning, of course, ikramakum Allah, if you have the major impurity, which requires that you take a ghusl, okay? For whatever reasons, either because of relations between the husband and wife or because of, uh, you know, fluid emanating from the man or the female, then you cannot just wipe over your chofs. Okay, you don't just, obviously, because you need to make ghusl anyhow. Uh, so this is very important. In a state of Janaba, one must take off the chofs and turban and wash underneath in the latter case. As for splints and bandages, so this is different. It's not just Qiyas, not just the same. So when you have a bandage, you're covering a, a certain part of the body, you have a broken limb and you have a cast or whatever, it is permissible to wipe over them during ablution without removing them. Moreover, one is permitted to wipe over plasters that cover wounds. All such coverings are permitted to be wiped over provided they cover only the injured area or the necessary parts which need to be covered for treatment. Meaning if you have an injury on your finger, you don't get a cast up to your shoulder. And you can't just wipe up to your shoulder and say that's now. No, you would use you would wipe up to the area that is covered. Okay, and generally they're not going to cover your whole arm for a finger. Right. Uh, however, if the splint, the bandage, or the light covers more than the area... The injured area unnecessarily the unnecessary parts must be removed in addition it is permissible to wipe over splints in both states of ritual impurity the minor and the major okay in other words it is permissible to wipe over the splint until it is removed or the broken limb heals in a nutshell the permissibility of wiping over the splint during purification is dependent on the necessity uh, of the cover Okay, so you don't have to enter it into purity, neither, because it was something out of necessity. You're wearing a cast because you need to wear a cast, not because you want to. And it's not something optional like wearing a turban or wearing your socks, but rather it is absolute necessary. You know, you, you need to cover your injured, whatever the case may be. Um, the proof of the permissibility of wiping over the splint in the following narration uh, narrated by Jabir radiallahu ta'ala who reported once we were on a journey and one of us injured his head by a stone then that man had a wet dream so he asked his companion saying is it permissible for me to perform tayammum you know to wa wash with clean earth to wipe with clean earth uh, they answered him saying we do not see any legal permission for you as you are able to use water. You're able to use water. We don't see that permissible. Even though you have this head injury, you know, you can't wipe. So the man had a ritual bath. He made ghusl, okay? After which he died. He died. The water, maybe it caused infection, whatever the case was. 
When we came to Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we told him about this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they killed him. May Allah kill them. Why did they not ask when being ignorant? For inquiry is the cure for ignorance. It would have been sufficient for him to perform tayammum with a clean earth instead of uh, wudu and to bandage his wound with a piece of cloth over and then wipe it over it and then wipe over the piece of cloth. Related by Abu Dawood in Ibn Majah, deemed it sahih. Uh, Taib. So that shows us that it's permissible and that if there's a, a, a necessity and there's a harm in using water, then for sure it's legislated you should make tayammum if it's going to cause an infection and so on and so forth. Although this is a little bit out, but we'll get into tayammum, uh, I think, in the next lesson. The area is to be wiped over. Wiping is to be applied to the upper part of the hoofs or the socks. So we don't wipe on the bottom of our feet. As for the turban... Most of it should be wiped over, okay? Especially its folds. However, the splint has to be wholly wiped over. So if you have a cast, then you wipe over the whole cast, okay? You you wipe over the whole thing. Uh, but the hoofs, they are wiped over only on the top. And the way there which this is performed. So Imam Fuzan uh, explicates and he says wiping over the hoofs during ablution is to be by passing one's wet fingers from one's toes towards one's legs so you're coming back towards your legs the right foot is to be wiped over with the right hand okay and vice versa meaning the left should be with the left hand uh, also one should open one's fingers during wiping and should not repeat wiping. So you don't keep wiping and you know like this because people do all kind of different things which they have no authority to do. So you wipe it once and you open your fingers and you wipe towards your leg. And then he says, may Allah guide us all to useful knowledge. Al-Manafiya wa amal al-Salih wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.